just arrived. Just got to set the hide up. We're a bit late. It's rather clear, but just how beautiful, eh? Good dog, yeah. There's a good dog. Good girl. That's a good dog. Where is he? Go on. Good girl. That's a good dog. First thing I'm going to do before I even start on the goose is just make sure I've got enough of this foam and glue a couple of pieces up so that they're ready for building the body up. So I've got to just cut round the foam a couple of pieces of this and uh, glue them together to make the body. So I need to cut out two pieces this size and glue them together. That's one piece. Now we've got to mark round that and cut the second piece. For speed I'm going to glue these together with the hot glue gun. And then I've got to make a base as well, so I've got some half inch ply there, which I'm going to cut into a nice oval shape. And I'll coat that with some gravel and sand, or I'll coat that with something to make it look nice for the goose to stand on. Right, well there's the basics of our body made, and the base made over there. Next I want to work on the eyes. I've got some glass ones here, just with pupils, so I need to paint the interior of these, with a blue-grey going into deep brown at the outside, the same as the goose's eyes. Well, we've been shooting this morning, first light as you see, and we've got this rather attractive pinkfoot goose. My first ever one, so I'd rather like to keep this one as a memory for myself. It's a lovely morning, and I'm going to uh, mount this one. And I know many of you like to see how I do that. It'll be very similar to the old, same old traditional ways I've been using. Um, all I'm going to use is uh, a foam body and then wire and fiberglass wool and so on. Simple materials we can get most places fairly easily. So I'll show you how I do this as we go along. Uh, the questions I've had from many of you is do we need formaldehyde and so on. No, the borax is usually enough unless you don't flesh it out well enough or there's some hidden uh, inaccessible areas that are more difficult to work on which in case you might use formaldehyde. For nearly all the birds and animals that we do the uh, the borax powder is enough. In America they were calling it the three mules washing soda. Um, it's quite a harmless uh, chemical and in fact I'll be able to eat this goose afterwards. We don't waste the meat of any of these fish or fowl that we, that we shoot. Um, they go into the pot as well. And um, another question that's been asked is does it smell? Well actually when you're doing it, as long as you don't cut the wrong places, as long as you just skim the bird, it hardly smells at all. And certainly once it's done and it's drying, there should be no smell at all and then they certainly wouldn't be afterwards. Do they last with this method? Yes, strangely enough, even with simple stuff like borax. Um, my birds have been, I mean I've got them over 20 years old, I've still sold nearly all of my stuff off anyway, but I do have one or two of the older ones, fish and birds, and they've lasted perfectly well. 
So uh, it's a simple way to do it, it's no traditional way to do it. Of course there are modern methods, of course you can buy the body forms, of course you can get other chemicals, but if you just want to do it cheaply, simply, traditionally, this way works for me. Remember I don't call myself a professional taxidermist, professional artist, yes, but not a taxidermist. I was taught by a professional taxidermist using these methods. His work survived very, very well, he's a wonderful chap. And, um, I just use his methods and they suit me fine. So you take your choice, don't you? Okay then, my first job is to skin the bird and as I'm doing that I'm going to be using sodium borate or ordinary borax um, to work into the skin all of the time. Not only am I working that in to help keep a grip, but it also preserves the bird. First of all I want to get things nice and clean. So I'm going to use a bit of sponge just to clean that up. Some people wash the entire skin off, the feathers off. I just like to keep it clean from the very beginning. It tends to dry out well and clean anyway afterwards. Doesn't to worry. Be a bit of some of this muck and blood that's off it straight away. Turn the bird around and we're going to work our way down the middle here, down the breastbone and then jump into the neck as far as we can go. So parting the feathers down here at the breastbone a lot of fluff in here. Just slice once, peel it away, and we should, without using the knife, be able to peel the skin back all the way back down here and up to the throat. We don't really want to cut up the neck if we can help it. I want to be able to skin that up and round the neck so I don't have to sew it all up. It saves a lot of work if I don't have to. Let's see how far we can go with it then. So working my way down here nice and cleanly, not even using any boraxes yet, working my thumbs underneath the skin quickly as this. Work it back, right back down to the tail. It's quite quick to do. In fact it's easier to do this than plucking the bird if you're going to eat it as well. So keep it neat, keep that straight all the way down right to the vent, so there shouldn't, we don't want all the liquids out, we don't want any mess out here. I'm going to go right down, without it making any mess at all, all the way down to the vent, right down round the vent, right down underneath into the tail here. Just have a little bit so make sure you can see it. There we are, you can see the tail coming up here now. I'm just go round to the vent. I'm going to cut round there, that's right, carefully. Now, we start to use the borax, I'm starting to peel back, I'm going to take some borax from my hand. Remember that the borax is not poisonous, it's not harmful, um, and we can wash the bird and eat it afterwards, so there's no problem with it. Not at all dangerous. Keep plenty of that borax going into it. Keep peeling away the skin all the way down, right round to the wings, right round to the legs. Now when you come to the leg, work your way down and around the leg. Just push your fingers in, in between, use the spare borax you've got in there, keep using the borax to help give you a grip, and all the time you're working that borax into the skin. Right down, round the leg there, look. Peeling apart the tendons from the skin. Plenty of borax all the time right down round that leg as soon as you can reach down and get round and through that joint there with your finger look see my finger coming out I've got now round that leg which is important a bit more borax so I can get the grip pull it away from the flesh keep working use your fingernails keep working down keep working down Get right down to that knee joint. Get right down there. As much as you can. Now we might just want to use a scalpel a little bit now just to ease it away. Just to ease it away from the joint here. To get right down to that knuckle joint. Just nicking the skin. Don't, don't nick the skin itself. Just nick inside between the skin and the bone and the tendons until you get right down here to the 
to the knee joint. Now then you're going to need quite a hefty pair of tin snips for a big bird like this. So scissors will do on smaller birds but for a bigger bird like this we need something quite hefty. So tin snips in this case get in there, cut through it. So right through nice and neatly go in with your scalpel just finish off any tendons or make sure there's nothing joining it now it's not too gory there's no blood at all so far except for where I shot it this morning so nothing's going to be wasted but a beautiful creature here and as you've seen by the video already I do like to study and watch these and I enjoy them in their natural form but just sometimes I'll cull out for my own use and nothing gets wasted. We're not shooting all of the time, we're not shooting hundreds. Right that's one side there, now we work our way around Keep coming down around the crop here, right down around the neck. You can see I got it smack in the chest here. He wasn't going anywhere. Down and around the neck, peeling down around the wing. I'll only do one side, then I'll just get on with the other side. Right down here to the wing, peeling around the neck. Put plenty of borax in. Can't stress that enough. There's the throat. Peeling that back. The windpipe. Now we've got to get underneath this neck here. There we go. Get my fingers around there. Right around. Peeling down the neck. Again borax in there. Plenty of it can't use too much borax, we can always dust it out later. And I'm now peeling down the neck like pulling a sock off your foot. So again, plenty of borax all the way, all the time, keep that going. I'd leave that for the moment. Now we've got to get back to the wing again. The wing, we're going to need to use the scalpel a little bit more because it has to be pulled right back down around this wing. Now before I get any further with the wing I'm going to go over to the other side and I'm going to start to work away at the other side as well. I have to use the scalpel gently now, don't cut the skin whatever you do, to pull away from the, to peel away from the uh, tendons that are hanging onto the skin here because obviously the bird being beautifully designed as a creature and uh, nature has made it so that the parts that are under most stress have additional strengthening of these tendons. It's peeling away down the skin. Don't cut through the skin itself. Just cut down to it around the meat here. Try to not leave any meat at all. Right. Up close. Break the bone. Cut through. A little bit gory that bit but then we want to use the knife to finish off the tendons. Big heavy knife. To about halfway, just before the, the joints. I've got right underneath the bird. Now I've got to reach right round and cut away carefully around the tail. Now, cut carefully at the tail. Work your way down. Just work your way down the skin. This is the bit we've got to be careful about. Right, there we are, then we just had to slice off the remainder of that. Now I've got to go in there and trim out any excess flesh that's in and around the tail feathers just at that end and plenty of borax. Now the bird should lift up. We'll be able now to get at the wing so we can see that. Watch it there, it's a bit of blood coming down. Plenty in there of the borax and work my way down now. Cut away the tendons and the feathers from there as we go along. Not easy, this bit. 
Once you get round a bit further it's not quite so bad, but just this first bit is difficult to, to remove. This elbow joint here. Inside there there's virtually no flesh anyway. So I can afford to take it off there, cut through that, put plenty of borax in there, that joint, and pull it back through and I've got to do the same the other side. The wings, I've now got to work our way down carefully around the head to do the skull. And I've got to reproduce this as carefully as I can in the foam and work and build up the neck. So now I've got to work down, like pulling down a pair of socks, the neck, put on more stitches than we need. Let's clean it up again, it's getting this coming out of the beak. Now we've got to work very carefully with the scalpel just around the edges, peeling back the skin around the eyes, the ears. You can, you can see now we've got right down to the eye. We don't need to go much further than this. We have to remove the eye now, so we've got to the other side. Right, we've got the head clear. We should do much more on there now. Just a bit more down the beak. Not a lot, just a little bit. Just to remove it down and around underneath. We can get the tongue out fully. It's time to get the eyes out. So I'm going to use a pair of tweezers and the scalpel and just cut around the outside edge of the eye socket like this. Fairly easy. Don't burst the eyeball, no need to. Just cut around the outside edge to loosen any tendons holding it like that, go in with the tweezers underneath it and just lift the whole thing out like that to one side, make sure we've got rid of all of the waste from in there, don't want anything left in there and immediately you've done that, fill it up with borax all over this bit here, that's it, same over here now Right around underneath, get in there with the tweezers, lift the whole thing out. I don't know it was an eyeball, make sure there's no flesh left. Fill with borax all the way around the skin here. Now it's time to chop off the head and clean up the back. So I'm going to cut first underneath here along each side of the tongue, like that. So that the whole tongue will come out when I chop everything out in a moment. Get underneath that with a, a larger scalpel and lift out all of that mess there. The tongue and everything else that comes with it. And I want to chop straight down into there, like that, where the neck goes in, so that I'm making a hole in the back of the skull. Straight down to the back of the skull. Curve around a fraction. Right round there. Right round there. Get in there. Peel it out. Put that to one side ready to copy later. And I've still got to get into the back of this skull. Now, that was a bit too heavy for the knife, so I'm going to get in with my heavy snips. Back of the skull. There we go. It's all been removed in one swoop. Straight down and a nice archway in there. Cleaning out anything that we don't need. Anything that's not bone. And there we are, that's completely clear. Just have to remove a little bit of the edges. Clean it up. Nothing left in there now that needs taking out. Maybe a little defleshing at the sides here, that's all. And 
Then before we pull that back through, we've got to put in fiberglass. We need to put fiberglass inside the head now, right into that skull and down into the beak. Really stuff it solid. I'll see why later. And into the eye sockets as well, because we're going to put the eyes in in just a moment. We painted those earlier, if you remember. So we'll go and get those next. That's all that needs. It doesn't take any formaldehyde. We've got all the flesh off, we've got all the mess out, we've got all the brains out. And that's ready to pull back through. OK, here are our painted eyes. You can see with the blue inner edges against the pupils and then going out to the brown. And I've got to snip those off with the pliers. Because we've got to push those wires just into the skull each side, into the fiberglass wool we've already produced, before we draw it back over. So I take an eye, find the middle of the orb and put it right into there, press it right in and there's our goose eye ready to go. The same the other side. This is why I put that fiberglass in earlier to hold these. Put that right into there. Don't want it in too far. It's gone in a little bit far that one. Back a bit, there we go. So now you can see that's ready. And now I've got to start pulling that a lot of feathers back over there and I've got to re-stitch up that neck. There we go. And that's got to come right back without tearing it any further than I already have. There we go. That's that. Then I want to mend this neck before I go any further. I'll stitch it up now because it's going to start drying. Okay I've done a, a double knot. I've doubled the line and knotted at the end and I'm going to go in first of all from the back here so the knot remains on the inside nice and neatly. Pull it through tight, back over and we'll just tighten up at this end first just pulling it all together, so much so that I now have a job to find where I'm going. And you can see already there's barely a, a way to tell that I've been, but there's a cut there. Now when we come to this last little bit of skin, be careful, we've got to go back over the, back through the needle, back through the thread, fishing line I'm using here, now I'm using 8 pound fishing line. I want to tighten many feathers up in that. Nice and tight. Get right down to the skin again and just put another, another knot in that. Cut that right down close in. And we'll put that needle to one side for later. And that head is now ready to have the, the neck put through there later. Right, next job, lay the whole bird out again. Spread the legs, clean it up a bit at this stage. There we go. Because now we've got to make sure there's no flesh, just the last, any last remnants of defleshing to do. Not much left in there, most of that is just borax, it's gone a bit mucky. There we go, just last little bits of flesh that I might have just missed, not much at all. Do a good skinning job in the first place. Okay, knitting needle and fiberglass. Put this to one side. I've now cleaned the bench up and cleaned the bird up. And I've got to start putting small amounts at first of fiberglass down into these sockets for the legs and the wings, make sure they're untwisted. Use your finger if you can. I mean a big bird like this I can get in there quite well with my finger at first. 
and use the end of the needle to force the wool down into there. We want it nice and stiff. We want it built just like the muscle would be before I put the wire through. The bird skinned and the stuffing put into the legs and the head. You can see the eyes here now showing just in the perfect positions. Next we've got to put wires up through the legs and through the wings before we build the body. Now I'm using quite heavy wire for this. I'm going to snip the ends off at an angle to make them sharper. It makes a nice point. And I've got to have those long enough to come up and right back and through the um, plastic. So it's got to be at least that thick to go right through and come back. Then I've got to have the length of the leg. And then I've got to have enough to go through the board. So I reckon quite long. I want not just one of those each leg but two because this is quite a heavy bird. And I'm going to have to... I think put two wires each leg, which is a lot of work, it's quite difficult, but it should work. I don't think one wire alone will hold it up, it's two a leg. This first, actually I've got to do two through them because they're going to be standing on these, so that wire's got to go up through the heel of the foot here right up inside and right the way through here. Right, there's one wire. Now I've got to put the second one up through the same. There, one through the wings here. Next part is to build the body now. I've got to go back and uh, shape the body up and build the neck and I'll show you that in a moment. Right, here we've got the uh, actual body and the blank. So you see it's the right height. Um, and it's going to be a bit smaller than we thought, so we've got to take it down to about there. Chop around that one as near as we can. Next thing is we've got to make the neck. So I need some wire long enough for the neck, and I need two pieces for that. So that's got to be long enough to go right down through here, come out there, and be long enough to be the whole neck of the goose plus a bit through the head. So it looks like we've got virtually identical pieces if we chop it in half there. And um, it's just a matter of shaping it and binding it then. So they've got to go down the top here, into there, right down through the front there, out the bottom. And at the bottom we bend it over. like that and pull it back again into itself like that. Tap it in. It goes right in. We want it pushing out again so make sure it goes right in. And we need to do the second one. Come out and forward a bit. Already start shaping it because you know, there are certain impossibilities for it. It can't bend beyond certain parameters. It has to come forward first out of here. Now we've got to build this neck around them. Before I do that, just want to uh, start off. separating them out a bit, just to space them. Because we know that neck is at least that thick. Just to space them out. There we go. 
just to make sure we've got a certain thickness going before I start winding the wool around. Now the next job is for me to wind fiberglass wool around this. Start off through it. And I want to thicken it out to the thickness of the neck, like this. And then I'm going to put ordinary wool around that. And I'm going to finish off by winding this wool around here and binding it down. So we've got the neck of the goose fashioned. Same old materials, just the foam, just fiberglass, just borax. And there we are, that's our neck ready. And if we look at this one, that shouldn't be far out. Yeah, there we go, look, almost identical. And once it's through like this, I've got to take the wire right through the top of the skull here and pull it up. As you see, the neck is now up and through there. We pull it right down over the bird. The bird has to come down and across this now. Bring it down the neck like this. So that the breast comes across this part. And next, I've got to get these wings through, and they go in just about here. Well, that's the wings through. And there's the two wires down through here and bent back again, ready to tap in. Well there we almost have it. You can see now the uh, the body is inside, the wings and everything is set out on the wires. All I have to do now is pad this out a little more in the right places and sew it around here and then it's a matter of doing the base. Down to these last few feathers at the tail. And when we fluff that out, you'd hardly know anything had been done to the animal. You'd think it would just been shot. So just a couple of stitches more to tie it up. Now a little bit of cleaning up to do before we think about bending wires. Just bend a few things into shape now. Right, the way the wings go, for instance. Got to get those right. They come back, back, then forwards, and then back. I like that. Got to bring those right up and underneath here in a moment. Feathers lying right. So back and forwards and back. Up under these, tuck it in a bit. Like that. Bring these feathers round. And a little bit of bending. Now it looks like a bird that's been shot, but we've just got to set it upright. So I need to go and get the base sorted out. At the moment I'm making the base, so I've just put this temporarily into a vise here, just so we can start setting it up. And it's in approximately the right position. Well that's enough work for tonight. And we'll finish off when we've got the base dried. At this stage we've really got to get the pose of the bird right. So here are just two pictures of the actual animals in situ that we'll try and work from to get the stance correct. Now what I've done for the base of the goose is to use a round piece of plywood and then mixed PVA glue, that's the white woodworking glue for the initiated polyvinyl acetate, but the ordinary art glue, white glue, woodworking glue, and mix some sand with that with a little bit of water and that will give me this wet effect of the sand with little bits of shell in. And next we're going to make some worm casts on this which are rather fun and we'll use this syringe to do this. We'll take some white uh, PVA glue, put that into a bowl 
add a bit of sand, fix it up to a nice gunge, and put some of that into the syringe. That should do it. Now what we should be able to do is swirl that, squeeze that out, and swirl it around to make a worm cast like that. Just drop this on, swirl it out. If we made it a little bit thicker, we could probably build them up a bit. Build it up a bit like that. This idea of worm casts. And the feet are going, feet of the bird are going to go here. There we are. Right, we're now putting the wire down through the base. We've got those two just starting off. Move we'll this back a bit and we'll make sure that both of those go through the respective holes. Like so. Keep pushing them down. And just lay it on its front and pull them through with the pliers so they come right down tight. It's important that the feet really come down tight onto here. And we can snip them off just about a quarter of an inch up. And pen them over. That and that. Put the bird up straight again. And now we start to see it in a much better light. So now we've got to set it up just at the right angles. You'll see how now the feet are flatter on the base. Now nice worm casts are making a bit more sense. It needs bending up a little bit with the knees. That's a bit better. We've got a nice curve to the bird. So all we've got to do now is leave that to dry and we'll fluff it up a bit more later. You see I've put some wool around it as well to help keep the feathers nice and neat and in form. Well here we are now, the bird's finished, I've just got it wrapped with wool, got the stance set and I'm drying it out gently in front of the fire a bit before leaving it for a long time to dry out naturally, just to get the feathers set. Hopefully now you can see I've got a fairly natural pose to it. Looks as if it's just slightly startled because there's something coming from the left and he's turning to look 
but also his body language means that he's ready to move away. Then it's time to remove the wool wrapping and we'll take it outside to take a look at it in normal morning sunlight. And that's the completion of this bird.